Welcome back to another discipleship training session. We are continuing our exercise on how to study the Bible, looking up and researching what curses are. So we will be picking up today in the book of Psalm. We finally have made it <laughs> almost through Old Testament. So we are going to be at Psalm 37 and 22 on today. But before we get started there in the Thoughts, questions, or comments on anything that we've been doing thus far. Hey, Trina, good to see you. Charlene, got my camera going now. Oh, the, the towel screen so I can see everybody. <laughs> um, okay. Huh? Oh, share your screen. Share the tab. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me share so you guys can see the Bible, and we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, so um, Psalm 37 and 22 says, For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. So those that will be blessed of God. Um, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Plain and simple. <laughs> she said keep on your cross. All right, hold on. Where's my cursor? All right. All right. Psalm 62 and 4 says, the only, they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. And Selah means pause. Think about that. Consider it. In context? Okay. Okay, so in the context, I'm going to look at this in Amplified Classic. It says, how long will you set upon a man that you may slay him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They only consult to cast him down from his height to dishonor him. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. My soul wait only upon God and silently submit to him for my hope and expectation are from him. So let me go to that and easy to read and see if that makes a difference. Oh, you got it? Oh, you said no. Okay, great. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm going to go further. Um, because it's... Why y'all talking? I'm going to look. The way they use it is like the blasphemy because we saw the other definitions. Mm -hmm. They use it in that like when he's talking, he's... It's a verbal thing, not like an actual curse. So this one says, curse can be verbal. easy to read, it says, um, it makes you happy. It says, in public, you say nice things, but in private, you curse me. Yeah, I like this. That's what I was so now we need to go to Blue Letter. Okay, so that's why I'm like, I want to see what this is easy to read. Uh, all right, so I'm going to pull a Blue Letter and remind me to share with the... Google students, because I tend to forget. So now I actually have a question for you. Okay. Um, what made you want to go further after looking at the Amplified? Because I still didn't understand. It basically said the same thing as the Kirk King James. It didn't add any additional context to me. Yeah. So that's why I was like, mm. So the goal, you keep going forward until you be like, oh, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. I thought I was <laughs> That's why I was like, it seemed like they was like, like you talk good about me now, but in, in, in your head, you saying bad things. So for me, what I would do, what I've started doing, because easy to read puts it in like, simple it, it really simplifies. However, I don't trust just easy to read on its own if I don't compare it to KJV. So I looked at KJV, because that's what we start and everything in, didn't understand that. Now I'm going to go to Amplify, because Amplify pretty much trust it, but still want to run that past KJV. Uh, it was basically saying the same thing, so it did not amplify, clarify the understanding. So, since I know easy to read, we'll just like really break it down into layman's terms. I'm like, let me just try that one, just to compare and see. So, even if I think I understand something, I may still check all three. And even at times, I'm going to complete Jewish Bible version. 
I'm just leaving this out because we'll be here all day if I go through five different translations. But usually it's KJV, because that, that's the baseline, then Amplify, Easy to Read, Complete Jewish Bible. Those are usually the translations I'm looking to. And then there are some ancillary ones that I've been going to, like the Living Bible translation, um, NLT. I forgot what that stands for. But so just know I'm checking a few translations just to see if anything makes it clearer because sometimes I can go to amplify and I'm like oh I get it and I'm like well just for you know giggles and whatever let me just go to easy to read and then that may even break it down even simpler and I'm like ooh, I like this better so check a few different translations before you're just like I'm done with this or even like when I did one, I did went to in context, I read it, and then I went back and did hit other translations and read all the translations yep. side by side, and that helped. Yep. So remember, let me go back. Oh well. Let me do this. Um, let me go back real quick before we do this. So remember that. Uh, okay. So remember that in the. Bible Gateway, if you do, let me just go back real quick. Uh, I'm going to have to do, let me just do this because I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to pull up a different Bible Gateway so I don't mess that one up. Um, so let's say, for instance, we're at Psalm 60, what is it, 64 and 2? 64 and four. Four. 60 what? Four. 64 and 4? Yes. I'm going to go to the back to KJV. I, I have 62 and 4. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Uh, thanks, Charlene. All right. All right. So remember, if you go to just one verb, this is down here. You can read it in all translations, but you can't be in several verses. You gotta just go to the one verse. And then you can scroll and read it in all of the various translations. So I would just scan, all of these are saying inwardly, inwardly, not adding. Um, but inside they are cursing. Um, this one says, as if he were shanking as if he was sagging, if, as if he were a sagging wall or a shaking fence. Okay, they just completely cut the last portion off. See, that's why you can't, yeah. yeah. So you got to check a couple of translations because sometimes stuff you miss them. Um, hatred hides in your heart, inwardly, um, my lips shall praise. I'm just reading the last portion. Um, private, you curse me. So you can see how different translations are saying it differently. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just go to the one verse and then click on all translations, that's a quick way to just peruse. Sometimes I'm doing that. So we go back to Blue Letter Bible and we go to Psalms 62 and 4. Right oh, I'm there? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am. Thank you. Okay. So we're just going to go to that last word, curse, to see what word it is. It's the, yeah, kalau. Come on, curse. It's doing crazy things. Mm -hmm. All right. And just so you know, for complete Jewish Bible, they have it. They just have it as a separate verse. Oh, they had it. At, yeah, it was a different verse. Five. Yeah, it starts at five rather than being included in four. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because I was like, I usually don't have that problem. I, I know, I'm like, <laughs> how are they taking stuff away? I'm like, let me just keep going. All right, so this is the one where, like, you lightly esteem um, to make despicable. So basically, you, you disrespect it. So with that, maybe you don't want to keep it now that we know. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know until you, like, thoroughly vet it out. Okay. Are any thoughts, questions, comments before we keep going? Okay. Switch back. All right. So now we are at Psalm 109.28. This says, let them curse, but bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I would look at. I'm gonna honestly go straight to a blue letter Bible. Who's who's this talking to? No, no, twenty eight. Who's someone talking to? You gotta go back and see. Hold on. Yep. So sign one hundred nine twenty eight. That word curse is the same one. So, what do you want to do as a class? Cause we not deciding. Okay, so. The vote is to not keep that one. Okay. So, Psalm 119.21. Thou has rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Curse, which do. Can you read the content? Yes. I'll keep that. Yeah. They not. They sing. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed. I'm sorry, let me go to her. Oh, that may not help. Uh, huh? Oh, I was making a nickname. Okay, I'm going to go to that Amplified Classic. My heart is breaking with the longing that it has for your ordinances and judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud and arrogant, the accursed ones. Okay. Okay. And this lets you know they're cursed because they err and wander from your commandments. So that would be one that can help give you understanding. Yeah, as to why someone would be cursed. So what brings a curse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also put it as result of a curse because you're being rebuked. Yep, that's good. And now do we know what rebuke means? Cast away. I'm going to say no. Let's look it up. All right. Cast away. Cast away. All right, so we, wait. That was Psalm, I keep doing that. That was Psalm 119 119 and 21. Okay. I that time to make sure I wasn't telling you the wrong word. Thank you. Oops. One. It's not that many songs. <laughs> One nineteen twenty one. So it's got God or I could be saying it wrong. <laughs> this may be one. I'm going to just go to the... I know what it means, but I just want to see what it says. So, to rebuke, reprove, corrupt. It's like disapproval. We'll look it up in dictionary.com in just a second. I'm just curious to see what they have. Rebuke, father, his son, priest. God rebukes a nation. All right, so let's go to dictionary.com. Dictionary. Dictionary. Rebuke. To rebuke someone. To express sharp, stern disapproval of. Mm-hmm. Reprimand. So... You know, it's not that I just just disapprove. I am expressing it in a sharp, stern way. So that's what's happening to the people that are cursed. They're getting rebuked. Gotcha. Stern, sharp disapproval. Did they see you? What'd you say? I was saying, did they see you? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to... Bible Gateway. Sorry. I had to remember what I'm doing. So as you can see, as we're doing this, we're going back and forth to a lot of different screens, and that's studying. So what'd you say? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Books that you got open. Like, yeah, like Charlene and I used to do. (laughs) Have all our books around us. What'd you say? He said we would still be in Deuteronomy. (laughs) 
Uh, but yeah, so hopefully we're really seeing there's a very staunch difference between just reading the Bible where you're just going through and then you're studying because this is taking much more time, but it's causing us to spend more time with God. So that's less time that you're, you know, letting your mind be on things that it should not be on or opening up to fear and blah, 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 all this different stuff. That's why I like to study because not only am I comprehending things or getting to know things maybe I didn't know or become aware of things I didn't, I wasn't aware of, but then God starts to speak and you spend a time with him. Even if you don't hear him in that particular study session, you're still spending time with him. So it's just, it's a really cool process. Yeah. And it adds a little, I mean, I guess it depends on what your hobbies are, but to me, this is more entertaining than just sitting down and just reading through the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Proverbs 3. 33, 333. This says, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Okay, so that should be giving you, what are you learning from that? Let me shut up. What are you learning? (laughs) The wicked are cursed. Um, actually, I would like to look at this in context and then um, what I'm thinking about is like the curse of the Lord because I don't want to guess and try to like, like, oh, the Lord cursed them. Like, I don't want to guess. I want to know that more about that, you know? Well, we know that kind of, he cursed the wicked. And he blessed the church. But wouldn't it, like, and this is just me, you know, talking it out. I'm not saying this is like a permanent thing, but wouldn't it more so. And make sure you're speaking up so everybody can hear and enunciating. Wouldn't it more so be that they are just receiving consequences of their actions? Because, like, I don't think that the Lord, like, actually curses people. It's just they're actually removes his presence. Right, but the being wicked is a you thing. So it's like you, a you, judgment you, rather than you, no. You decide if you're wicked or not. Which means if you decide to be wicked, that's the curse. Because you're now you're, you're operating in sin. So remember when we looked at I can't remember what specific was it in Nehemiah? It might have been Nehemiah. When it said that they took a curse and an oath with the Lord. So it was saying that it was a covenant that they were taking the blessings and the curses, the rewards and the consequences. So you can look at it from that perspective as well. When you see the curse of the Lord, it's not necessarily saying the Lord is cursing them. It's the consequences of the action for you violating the covenant that you have with God. I know it like if I... But we need to look at it from the letter Bible. could have been looking at this and like, oh, the Lord cursed people. That's why I wasn't trying to jump to that conclusion. I wanted to get more clarification on it. All right, so what we'll do, we'll read this in Amplify Classic. I'm going to go to Easy to Read. We'll probably look at, I may go to Complete Jewish Bible for this, Mm -hmm. and then we'll go to Blue Letter. So this says in Amplify Classic, do we just want to read that verse, or you want to read the context? The context verse, and then the rest of you can just read the Okay. For the perverse, we're starting at 32. For the perverse are an abomination extremely disgusting and detestable to the Lord. <laughs> but his com- why can I talk today? But his confidential communion and secret counsel are with the uncompromisingly righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with him. The curse of the Lord is in and on the house of the wicked, but he declares blessed, joyful, and favored with blessings the home of the just and consistently righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his undeserved favor to the low in rank, the humble, and the afflicted. So now let me go to easy to read, and then I'll go to complete Jewish Bible. 33 says the Lord curses a wicked family But he blesses the homes of those who live right. Let's go to complete Jewish. Thirty-three Adonai, curse is in the house of the wicked, 
but he blesses the home of the righteous. So this is Proverbs 3 and 33. Adonai? Mm -hmm. What did I say? Adonai. Okay, thank you. Adonai. Thank you. God the Father. I don't think I can't mind you say you're what? Like you're what do you mean you recant it? No, I think oh. I declare oh. the word wrong. But like, I, I was saying, we don't... I mean, okay, never mind, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> no, we should, because we need to see what curse, like what Hebrew word is being used here. Because you're trying to understand what the curse of the Lord means. So this is what I don't think we saw? No. no. Okay. Mayara. Mayara. Okay. That's clear. Curse. I, don't know. I hate when it does that. Kind Using of. the word to define the word? Yes. yes. It's literally a cardinal sin in English. It should be. <laughs> Let's see some ways it's used. The Lord shall sin upon the cursing, vexation, cursing. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he, oops, sorry, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. So basically, it's whatever the word curse means. That's yeah. yeah. That's basically <laughs> the sum total of what a curse is. Seems like that's what this word is basically communicating. All right, so I'm going to go back to Bible Gateway. Um, so what was the vote on this one? I'm sorry. Everybody said to keep it. You looked at the. Amplified, easy to read, and... CJ. Amplified, classic, yeah. easy to read, complete Jewish Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm just making it clear because there is an Amplified. Just in case. I, I write AMPC. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a pause while Radia is just typing her notes. This is a fall into who is cursed. Hmm? Who is cursed? That's the category. It could be who is cursed who is or how cursed? do you get cursed. Yeah. Who is cursed? Who is cursed? Yeah, because I think she has a category, like ways you get cursed, uh, being wicked. What brings a curse, type of curse, signs of a curse, result of curse, spoken curses, written curses, idols, things can be cursed. That includes, I include people in that one as well because you can distinguish it in the notes. Um, how curses come, disobedience, and a generational curse. Mm. So I checked what brings a curse for this one. Okay. So if anybody, if anybody was interested, that uh, oath and a curse uh, entered into a curse and into an oath is Nehemiah ten and twenty nine. Thank you. Yep, <laughs> Nehemiah ten and twenty nine. And before I forget, this is a Monday night thing, but thanks, um, Charlene, um, for pointing out the whole mod. I'm gonna go into that more um, tomorrow for the correction. Um, this was at the Monday night class, the bear mall, the 42 youth. And I had mentioned kill, but you said mall um, being like disfigured. So I'm going to correct myself Monday night and really go into elaboration on that. So thank you for that. Um, and then I found more scriptures about animals killing people. So, <laughs> okay. so. I, I just couldn't understand you because I thought you were saying moth, M-A-U-V-E. I'm sorry. It's That's what I mauled. thought too. M A U L D, right? Maud. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you gotta draw. You gotta put some country on that. Yeah. Maud. I was like Maud. Like, what we start talking about? Okay, that's it. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. So now we are proverb. But that's what we do. We hear something not right. That's what I like about this group. When we teach y'all, speak up. Don't be. Like, well, that's wrong. But we just gonna go along with it. No, we not. Y'all seen that meme with that little baby with the fist? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how Tremiko is. Yeah. She found the scripture about killing people. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that many. I'm like, there got to be more. He said that you can die by animal. So then the Lord starts showing me. Well, I'm like, I miss all of these. Let me put them in. So we'll. I should be the meme later. <laughs> Which is I can show you the meme later. Okay. Later. <laughs> yes, I was. Whatever that is. Like, yes. All right. So Proverbs 11 and 26 says. Oh, let me turn this off again. Hot. Uh, he that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him.
but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. No, I wouldn't get blue letter, blue letter for this curse. So. Okay. Yeah. So we're just going to go straight to blue letter. This is Proverbs 11, 26. Because at this point, the reason why we're just sometimes we're going straight to blue letter is it saves time. time. Do we keep this one or do we not? We know which curse this is. And I just forgot. What was that? 11, 26. Proverbs 11, 26. I asked because this is the same sense as the blessing. Does this look big on y'all's screen or does it look small? Uh, yeah, I would say it's probably, you need to probably zoom in. I'm sorry, y'all. Hit the three, three all the way to the right. But it's already big. That's crazy. Wait, right. hold on. Hold on. Let me get rid of this. Okay. All right, dang it. Does this does the screen look really small for y'all? Nice. What I'm sharing? Can y'all see it or does it look like really tiny? This is what they would be seeing. And that's if they on the uh, laptop. Okay. <laughs> Cause even if I go full screen. Because if I load it, it Yeah, it don't even really. Okay. I mean I can see it. Uh, right. <laughs> sorry guys. Alright. If y'all can't see stuff, let me know. And I'll adjust. But okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So if ever we're in class and things are too tiny, please speak up on Google so I can blow it up for y'all. Because I didn't realize that was real small. Okay. So this is uh, the curse is this one. Let's click on it. <laughs> oh, Nakab. Which is. To pierce, perforate, bore, appoint. Oh, blaspheme. Blaspheme. That's that one. Yeah. So they're going to blaspheme them or basically speak negative things because they're being starved. Okay. So everybody's saying no to that one. Sure. Okay. So now we're at Proverbs 20 and 20. 2020. My vision could. <laughs> Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness. Oh, that yeah. I, I think I know which one this one is. I'm not going to say nothing. That one Yeah, this is the ka kala. Yeah. Wait, what? So this one is the one to um, lightly esteem, be disrespectful. So what's the darkness part of the song? What's the who? Consequence. Okay, we're good? Because I didn't get Okay. All right, I missed it. All right, so now we're going back to the... Okay, you good? Okay. Um... To the next verse, Proverbs 24, 24. This says, He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. Blue letter. <laughs> we love us blue letter. I think so too, but we'll see. Is, is that a commentary on the news? What? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, because uh, this could be. This definitely could be. I need that said. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't want to do it. Okay. This is just uncomfortable. Last thing. Okay, so again, this is the people are going to speak bad about them. Look at how he's Okay. <laughs> All right. So at least we're getting familiar with Blue Letter Bible. Um, Proverbs 26 and 2 says, oh, well, okay, let me shut up. As the bird... <laughs> as, <laughs> couldn't even. Couldn't even. Never play cards with Tremiko as your partner. <laughs> Ain't got no poker face immediately. Yes. Take it. 
says, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying. So the curse causeless shall not come. <laughs> well, talk, tell me why. Now, I'm going to make y'all explain. I'm, I'm not convinced. convinced. <laughs> I would like some context. Assuming that the curse I, can't go where the righteous can. I, I, I took that the curse will always come because of something. Yeah. Like, a curse yeah. will never just pop up because it just popped up. Yeah. A curse that will, will always have a reason behind it. So okay. So let, that little last piece. So do you need context? Never mind. I don't need all the other questions. Like Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just keep my mouth closed. Everybody who's like, yeah, I'm like, can you please <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just like the, the way that it's written. I just need a little word. Yeah, yeah. Modernize the word. Okay, so in context, in Amplified Classic, this says, like snow in summer mm-hmm. and like rain in harvest, So honor is not fitting for a self-confident fool. Okay, so let me pause there. Do we understand the lingo that's happening of the contrasting and things? Is that the right word? Contrast? Like summer, like snow and summer. That's out of place. Um, Like rain and harvest. Because that's when you're gathering, right? So you don't want it to be raining. Um, So it's just saying, okay, this isn't right. Okay, so then two says, like the sparrow, that's a type of a bird, in her wandering, like the swallow, that's a type of a bird, in her flying, so the causeless curse does not alight. I'm going to go to a different translation. Um, Then three says, a whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a straight slender rod for the backs of self-confident fools. So let me go to easy to read on this. And then if I need to, I'll go to complete Jewish. I'm just going to go straight to verse two. Mm -hmm. Don't worry when someone curses you for no reason. Nothing bad will happen. Such words are like birds that fly past and never stop. No. Um, (laughs) Let me go to complete. It was too easy to Cause in my head, I'm like, sometimes what? birds do stop. So that's an example. Easy read. No, did they miss the mark on that one? Um, two. Where like a, your birds don't stop flying. Like, that's yeah. just, that's <laughs> like a fluttering sparrow or a flying swallow, an undeserved curse will come home to roots. Wait, what? An undeserved curse. Let me, um, I'm a, I, ain't no, no, I ain't gonna make no assumptions. I'm gonna be let me do this. Let, let me do this. Hold uh, on. Are you sure? Let's do this. Like what was that, Proverbs 26 and 2? Mm-hmm. Share this tab. Okay, thank you. I'll let you guys see in just a second on Google. Hold on, let me get this in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this one, this is a very good example of. These translations ain't really flowing, so let's find one that does. So I put in Proverbs 26 and 2 just to get that one verse. Let's go to all translations. Okay, so let's just start looking at the, let's focus on the last half of the thing and skim. So the curse that is causeless, I like not. So the curse without cause does not come. Um... Amplified classic, so the causeless curse does not come. So the curse causeless shall not come. That's a little more clear. Um, an undeserved curse goes nowhere. C E B. C E B. So an undeserved curse never arrives. That's a pretty good one. Um, we looked at complete Jewish Bible. C E B. Wait, a curse you don't deserve will take wings and fly away. Mm-mm. Whatever. So a curse of desire shall not come. So a curse so a curse uttered without cause shall not come upon a man. Nothing bad will happen. Such words are like birds. Oh we read that one. So an undeserved curse does not come rest. Um, a curse that is causeless does not alight. And the light means to basically or rest somewhere. Mm-hmm. A curse that is causeless does not alight. They are like darting 
flirting birds I want to follow. But curses will not harm someone who is innocent. That are undeserved never stick. That gives a little more context. So the curse that is causing shall not come. So a hastily spoken curse does not come to rest. They are like birds that fly away and their curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. Okay. Um, that's not bad. An undeserved curse goes nowhere. Curses will not harm someone who is innocent. A curse without cause will not alight. So the curse causes shall never come. We skip KJV. So the curse causes shall not come. There's one particular one I'm looking for too. It's still coming up. So an undeserved curse does not come. I usually look at this one sometimes, TLB. Let me see. An undeserved curse has no effect. Its intended victim will be no more harmed by it than by a sparrow or swallow flittering through the sky. Interesting. Um, message says you have as little to fear from an undeserved curse as from a dart of a... Where is that ring? Mm -hmm. Or the swoop of a swallow. So the curse without cause. Or not a light. This is a curse. Curse is uncalled for. Never laid out of Mm-hmm. So a curse without cause does not come to rest. I'm still approaching the one I'm looking for. So a curse without cause does not come to rest. So a curse without cause. Blah, blah, blah. Undeserved curses will never reach home. Are they saying like the the birds are struggling to fly? So I just looked up a uh, swallow um, and also fluttering because a lot of the a lot of the translations were using the word fluttering. So fluttering is flying unsteadily or hovering, oh. um, just hovering in place. And then a swallow only flies in the daytime for a specific like length, and they fly pretty low as well, so they never will fly at night. Hmm. Now. I didn't look up the sparrow yet, but I'm assuming that this has, like, the reason why they're mentioning that is probably just because of the, the flight pattern and how and how they don't fly at night or something. But it still don't make a whole, whole bunch of sense. Now, the whole fluttering swallow, it will never go anywhere because its goal is to travel and migrate somewhere. So if it's fluttering, which is, like, unsteadily flying or it's flying in place, then it will never go anywhere. Because when it doesn't fly at night, and if it's fluttering in the daytime, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Did you see the NLT? Is that what you were looking for? Um, yeah, I was looking, well, this one and NLT, mm-hmm, yeah, those two. So, some of these were actually better that we were looking at going up, but basically the thought is, um, there has to be a reason for you to be cursed. And as we've seen through the study, disobedience to God's word is always the cause for a curse sticking to you. Now, do that go the same way with generational curse? Like, because a kid don't do nothing because it's just a generational reason. I'm just asking, that's what I'm saying. The kid, the, you get what I'm asking, that the kid didn't do anything, but they still affected by that generational curse? So, so being born. So, remember that if, if they don't do something to turn their life around to go for God, mm -hmm. then it will. Okay. Um, and depending on how that curse entered, yeah. because we did see, for instance, with, um, I forgot whose sons it was, that they rebuilt the city of Jericho and they weren't supposed right. to. Mm -hmm. I mean, they died as a result of that. So, yeah, that's, that, that was a curse that was spoken generations ago, and it was still in effect. Now, there could be a curse that is actually placed within a family, mm -hmm. and as the children are born, blah, 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 they're affected. Like, um, we saw with Ham, Noah cursed Canaan. 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 Yeah, Canaan. So, they were going to always be servants to the other brothers. And then, later you see that the seven nations of Canaan got dispossessed because of their whole lifestyle and blah, 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 blah. So it can affect, but you can break curses. Right. But if I don't know there's a curse there to break, it will continue to flow until someone breaks that curse. And then it depends. Did that curse come on that bloodline from the sin of a person or a covenant that they took 
with you know a, de- a demon. Satan, yeah. Both require a relationship with the Lord and to break that curse. Yeah. But you don't automatically just get a reset because you didn't quote unquote do anything to well, deserve yeah. it. Yeah. So would that that child, um, if they start living according to God's word, the curse will not affect them, but they are still cursed. Is that a thing or no? Well, a curse has an effect, so you can't be cursed and it not have an yeah. effect. Because that's what? essentially what you're saying. So, so how can they would have that? to break it either way. Yeah. That's what we're saying. So oh. if that curse came through, you know, their great-great-grandmother was a witch. And dedicated it, them. It, she got to break, that person would then have to break that curse. If it was, you know, their father worshipped false gods and lived a sinful lifestyle. And then the curse, you start seeing cancer pop up in that person's they would have to pray against that and break that curse from happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, good question. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to our regular study screen the scriptures. Okay, so now we are in... Oh, pro- oh. real quick. And this also goes back to that category I had mentioned a couple weeks ago. Where the open question was, a person who curses someone without cause, does that curse come back to affect them? Mm -hmm. This at least is one bullet point that a person cursing someone without cause has no effect on the intended victim. We're still looking to see, is there a scriptural point for the second aspect of that question? Does it then then affect the person who tried to curse that person? Wait, what was that? Sorry, over again. So, um, a couple weeks ago when I was like, so we're seeing a lot of things about what brings a curse, how a curse is affected, and those who practices and curse it. So the question was, if a person, if Joe tries to curse Bill, and Bill has done nothing to deserve a curse and lives in righteousness, we've confirmed that it's not going to affect Bill. Mm-hmm. But is that curse then become like a boomerang or a consequence back to Joe for trying to curse Bill? Um. Gotcha. So it's still an open question, but this this answers one aspect of it that we already knew, but further is further evidence that a person who is is living righteously will not be affected by a curse. But is what is the consequence to that person that tries to curse that righteous person? Because there was a scripture that said that we were looking at that said it'll kind of come back to you. Is that where we got that question from? Uh, I think Rydasia had asked the question or something like that. It was a while ago, and I was just like, that's something you would, it was a situation where we were talking about, like, how you categorize your thoughts, and you, were something, it seems important, but you're not quite sure how it fits, set it aside, and as you get additional scripture that gives you more clarity and context, you kind of just keep set until you get a clearer picture. Can I, can I ask a question? It's class. <laughs> sure. So, but what you just said, like, if a person been trying to put a curse on... It, do it matter if they got children or not? Do they ain't do anything wrong? Or do they have to be God's children? So who is the thing? Wait. The person that's putting the curse, who's the person putting the curse on? So Joe. Joe? Let's go with Joe. Yeah, Joe putting the curse on Bill. Bill. Is Bill a... Bill has to be a child of God. So when that... Because if you're not a child of God, you are a sinner. Okay. So, was in the scripture saying if you're messing with God's children... It's First Samuel 17 and 48, I think. Can a curse come back to an evil person? Let me uh, go there. Oh, good. Okay. I, was like, I know it's in the notes. I just don't remember which one. First Samuel oops. 17. Sanji. I know, right? And Creating scriptures. First Samuel 17 and what? 17 and 48. Okay. Let me go to that. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet him. In context. All right, I'm going to just go for a chapter. Okay, yeah, memory's starting to come back. So I think this is because Goliath cursed David and ended up dying. That's where the question came from. I know it's in here somewhere. So how far back do I need to go? So I don't think it's this that so, specific oh, verse. It's, okay. This this chapter verse we was reading, and that's how that question came because we read this verse. Because about curse, Goliath cursed David. Goliath cursed David by his gods. Okay. And then 
David kills him and chops off his head. So the question was, if a person curses a righteous person, does that curse come back to that purveyor in their intent? And that's why we set it aside. And, that, and that's why I'm asking the question, because then we see in Scripture saying, if you mess with God's people, you will be cursed. That's why I was asking because that's what God told Abraham. Whoever bless you will be blessed, bless you, whoever curse you will be cursed. cursed. Yeah. And so that's where I was saying, like, you start adding those scriptures. But at that point, we only had that one. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. And we always try to say, is there two to three? Now, I know just off my collective knowledge, right, it says, you know, touch not in my anointing, do my prophet no harm. We know that vengeance is in the Lord. But in terms of specifically, when it comes to someone trying to curse someone, right. okay. is there that blowback when it's against the child of God? So I will... Um... Because I remember Balak and Balaam both trying to, well, Balak was the king, right? Yep. So, okay, Balak trying to get <laughs> Balaam. Israel. Yeah, trying to curse Israel. I know that he ends up getting killed later on. Yeah. So would that be a second instance of that? Like them, somebody trying to curse the children of God ended up getting that curse back on them? So I will say this. This is what I know. So... Which y'all don't know, probably. Yeah. What? What? No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> that is no, not sure. how I mean. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> this is what I know. I'm confident that y'all do not know. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> y'all ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> literally, no. What I'm trying to say is, I know this. I. I just can't. There's an element to the question. Shut up. <laughs> Let's just go here. So, we know you didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> so in Proverbs 26, 27, this says, whoever diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and whoever and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. So the question that you guys asked him, if someone tries to curse someone, let's say that's a child of God and they can't be cursed. Well, whenever you try to do evil, and we especially know you cannot be successful against a child of God. So the evil that you try to do or the, the yeah, let me just put it that way because evil could be a multiplicity of yeah. different things. It's going to come back because that very pit that you tried to dig that you wanted Bill to fall into, now, Joe, you're going to fall into it. That stone that you tried to roll upon, that person is going to roll back upon you. Yeah. And I didn't realize this was actually in chapter 26. I thought we had But I knew we were going to get back you. to this. Oh, sorry. Wait, what you say, Liam? I'm sorry. I was like, y'all going to have to pick a different name besides Joe for all this Okay. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, say something. I'm yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> sorry, Joe. Uh, who was talking? Nefertiria? Yeah, I thought we established that anyway because I don't know if it, which class it was in, but you said something like that because you used your neighbor for an example on uh, how they're doing wrong or whatever and how it's going to come back on them. Yeah. So I thought you had already answered the question. Well, that was more I so about the he who's there. trying to move a lamb, like yeah, trying to steal someone. Oh, yeah, that was an actual oh, curse. Oh, okay. I think we also had um, pretty much came to the same conclusion. And I think the specific question I asked was, was it identical? So, like, you try to no. curse them with one something, and then it comes directly back. But I think we ended up coming to a conclusion that it wasn't identical. But you, it could, well, it didn't have to be an identical, like, blowback. It could be something, a different curse that comes along. And, like, it could be death, even though you might not have spoken death over someone. Mm-hmm. But it could be death that comes back. And that. Yeah, it's not going to be an identical, oh, you tried to slap peace in my face, so now peace is going to slap get slapped in your yeah. face yeah it's just that your evil intentions are gonna come back to you because basically what you sow you reap mm-hmm. and that's basically what this is it's the sowing and reaping principle mm-hmm. you tried to dig a dip uh pit for somebody so what you sow you gonna reap you tried to roll a stone over upon someone so what you sow you're going to reap and that much more because it's not going to be successful against someone that's living righteously which means you're in right standing with god now if you're not in right standing with god you know Still, what you sow, you're going to reap, but then it will be effective in that person's life. So, you know, um, Tika is getting, you know, the curse on her, and Sumta is going to fall back on her, too. So. <laughs> trying, she's trying to think of names. Ain't nobody ever going to come up here with a name, Tika and Sumta. <laughs> um, 
So the, the reason why that's important and why like I want to try to pay attention to it, because as you're, whether you're teaching someone or organizing your notes, right, it just shows how, like, to the degree in which a detail you got to go into. So, for example, when we're talking about how ways a person gets cursed, this is a way a person gets cursed. They try to curse someone unrighteously. But you can't just put that bullet point and then not walk a person through how that works. Does that make sense? So I will put this one in your notes if you don't have it, the Proverbs 26, 27. And I do pray this, but not on people, um, the spirits, because we know spirits are yes. using people. So I want the enemy camp. That stone you tried to roll upon me is going to roll back upon you. That pit you tried to dig for me is going to roll back upon you. And wherever the fallout lays, we're going to let the laws take care of that. But I'm not putting that on a particular person because you're not supposed to pray prayers like return to sender. But we know that the attack is on the enemy's camp. <laughs> now, if you want to keep siding with the enemy, you're going you gonna to get that blowback too. And that's on you. But I'm not, you know, saying, Lord, let my neighbor fall into this pit. That's not what I'm praying. What I'm praying is for the enemy, the camp, Satan and his demons and the kingdom of darkness, for, that stole to, to, for the stone to roll back on them and for them to fall in that pit. So every weapon that's trying to be formed against me, it will not prosper. Um, and that's how I'm praying. I'm always praying in the spirit realm against the spirits, Satan, demons, and, and, and that whole host of the kingdom of darkness. But never are we calling people's names and saying, let that stone roll over on Tinka. Like, no, we shouldn't be doing that. So do we get that? Because I know that can get confused. And I remember sitting in a class one time and the person was like, well, I don't know if it was the, their husband or somebody. Somebody was doing wrong. And they were like, well, I pray... Uh, for them to, you know, all this stuff to happen. And I remember Marcus McGrew stepped in and was like, well, no, we're not supposed yeah. to. I don't know. He's trying yeah. to be so nice about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so we should not be praying for bad things to happen yeah. to people. So I just want to make that, that clear. That goes against scripture. Yeah. I yeah. was sitting there like, okay, you didn't get to that part of the Bible yet. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, yeah, hopefully that helps. On how to pray, because I know that can become confusing too. And this scripture is actually in your um, work warfare book. It I is. Didn't, I yep. just didn't put, and I pray that prayer, but I didn't put it together with this concept. I didn't take the principle. I just put every get you, every demon did for me. I I pray you fall into it. Yeah. I didn't really. <laughs> yeah. So the the pit and the the stone that they're trying to roll is some type of. You know, tribulation, persecution, affliction, defeat, delay is something to hurt you, to harm you. So it could be a myriad of ways that they're trying, that that stone could represent or that pit could represent a myriad of different ways that you could be negatively impacted because of the dirt and evil that the enemy's camp is trying to, to use against you. So, yeah, think of it in that sense. Um, and it makes it very broad as to, because, you know, their tactics are... Very expensive. They got a lot of time on their hands. They do. They got a lot of time. So, oh, okay. So does that pretty much answer that question then? Okay, cool. So let's go back. And now we are uh, 27 and 14, Proverbs 27 and 14. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. I would do that in context. Yeah. So we're going to do which one first? Okay, context. context. Mm -hmm. Let's go to... Oh, click. Oh, oh, you can wake somebody up early. What? 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 So, Amplified Classic, the judge, and a lot of times the Proverbs, each verse don't connect. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the judge tells the creditor, Take the garment of one who is security for a stranger and hold him in pledge when he is security for foreigners. So kind of like, um, hold on, mm -hmm. um, 14 with loan. Because you're security for that pledge, that loan, that whatever's out okay. there. So now that person didn't pay, so now you got to pay gotcha. in that sense. Okay. So these are unrelated mm -hmm. verses. So 14 says... The flatterer, and just know, flattery is never a good thing. When someone's flattering, that's bad. The flatterer who loudly praises and glorifies his neighbor, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted as cursing him. 
for he will be suspected of sinister purposes. What's flattery? Yeah. Flattery, let me see if I can explain it, but we're going to go to dictionary.com. It's saying things to, it's kind of like manipulation. It's yeah. kind of like yeah. a Let me look. Yeah. Brown yeah. knows it. It's, like yeah, it's, I'm brown knows sucking up yeah. to try to make, it's, it's, it's yeah. Curse. Your intentions are not pure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's confident. Yeah. That's like, disingenuous. Yeah. Like yeah, I think it might, it might go right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, obviously, I'm like, it's a, flattery is a little more than just being like, hey, everybody, you look nice today. That's okay. stuff. Yeah. It might go into for malicious intent. Like, yeah. I'm saying good things to get something out of you. Yeah. Excessive, insincere, insincere praise. Oh, oh. Okay. flattery is not good. If someone's flattering you, oh, my like antennas are up. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. they don't mean it. Because oh, you don't, gosh. yeah. Let me look up flatter. Flatter. Okay, so here's some some different stuff. To try to please by complimentary remarks or attention, to praise or compliment insincerely. Um, we will have to look that word up. Effusively or excessively. So you, it's just it's too much. Like, come on. And that's why they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Because mm. it's just excessive and insincere. I kind of, I don't even know if this. Let me know if this relates or not. But um, Hamlet, you protest too much. Mm-hmm. It's like you're doing too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be our our yeah. our what twenty what would twenty first century. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're doing too much. Gotcha. That's what that is. That's what flattery. You're doing way too much now. Well, That's, actually, that. That wouldn't work because that's actually the opposite. That that line of Shakespeare, "Thou protest too much," was saying that Hamlet was saying like you're excessive in your deniability of this. So if someone is like constantly like, you know, I don't do that. I'm not that person, and it's like okay. thou protest too much. Okay. Because like if it's legit, that's not something you do. So it's not flattery. But it's, it's not excessive. flattery. It's excessive. It's excessive. Yeah. It's okay. So. Okay. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. That's why I'm right. Like, yeah, have you ever been, like, for example, when you go shopping mm-hmm. and the sales associates get paid on commission and they all up in your face, like, this would look great on you. This would go with this. This would go with that. Look at this, how that look. It's like, you know, goodness, why I look fat in that. But because you get paid commission. <laughs> this is a good one to play upon the vanity or, I can't say that susceptibility. word, susceptibility, susceptibility of. So that's what you play. Joel, I've always loved that word. Beguile. <laughs> so you, you know the beguile <laughs> is not a good thing. So yeah, I'm playing upon whatever like your carnal. I'm I'm learning your carnal points of weakness, and I'm gonna play upon that. Basically, is what the flattery is doing. So that's how men can get a lot of women and con them out of thousands of do- dollars. They flatter them. Women. <laughs> Watch um what is that on Netflix? Uh, uh, the, yeah, the Tim Boy. Tinder Swindler. He's good too. That nigga is a bro. Yeah. <laughs> Tinder Swindler on uh, Netflix. Women, women out of ten million dollars. Like yeah, lots of money. He's he 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 still doing it. He's still doing it. He's still doing, he's still doing it. it. But he just now he ain't as international as he used to be. <laughs> 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 you step out of Israel, you going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back. Oh, so did we figure out? What That's when we said go to blue ladder. Okay, go to blue ladder. So this was what Proverbs twenty-seven fourteen. All right. So we want to see what this word cursing or curse is. Uh, no. It's, oh. no, it's right. I just wouldn't use it. Kill Allah. Curse. Curse, cursing, a curse, curse. Vilification, execration. Don't no, curse me. Curse. Can you go to the uh, <laughs> scriptures? At the Bible. Scriptures, they use the same word. I should bring a curse upon me. Not blessing. 
Yeah. Behold, I set this day before you a blessing and a curse. Yeah. But because of the context is why I wouldn't use this verse. Yeah. Not because the, the word is correct. Okay. But what the what the intention behind is talking about that person's motives. Yes. Right? Like so this is not a blessing, this person complimenting you. They're trying to set you up for something. But that person is not actively saying a curse to you, then that's why I wouldn't use the context. I wouldn't use that. So, okay. I just had to read 15. I was like, so, good. Huh? Not. You probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, as soon as you said it in the back of my head, it was like, like nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. Say it out of this one. <laughs> At my water. So, uh, hey guys. <laughs> All right. Um, we good to move to next? Yeah, we good. All right. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 28 27. <clears throat> he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many curse, shall have many a curse. Many acres. Let's just see. I'm curious what yeah. that one is uh, in the letter 2827. Yeah, because that actually would make a lot of sense depending on what it means. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Nothing here. Okay, so. What? Yes. Mahara. Yeah. Okay. I would say yes. Curse. I forgot what this word means. This is the one we looked at. Proverb. Oh, execration. Then it was like violent speech. Cursing. Which is. I see why you pause and read like four or five scriptures. I guess execration. Like yeah. Like to detest utterly upon yeah, abominate evil upon. Yeah. and procreate evil upon damn the now. I would say uh, yeah. yeah, and that's actually very interesting to the kind of where you can go from studying that verse. You can want to go back where? To the uh, scripture. Can you get other translations? Ooh, Oh, thank you. I never saw that. I mean, I never read it. It was just right there. Gosh darn it. I didn't see that. <laughs> I know. You you should have said something. Oh, I thought you just thought you know it was what? an easier way. No, I didn't even like pay attention to that. So sorry guys, let me go back. Y'all probably saw it. I didn't. It was right here. Other translation. So you don't have to <laughs> Like, all right, so you, we all learned in something. Like, oh. All right, so other translations. <sighs> so, Mika, I yeah. want you to take this and understand it. <laughs> when we read something, and we may not see it. <laughs> okay. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. Let me know when to scroll. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I just wanted to read it to see if it was like that many uh curses was kind of throwing me off, but some versions. So what were you saying, Donovan? Um, that I would keep it because it's definitely a way you get cursed. But I, I was saying that that opens like a lot of interesting paths you can take in just studying about like perception of poverty and things like that in scripture. Because there's a lot of people who avert their eyes to the poor. <laughs> hmm. So, does this mean like give to them in like multiple kinds of ways? Like if you like volunteer versus like just monetary? Like, if you help them in some type of way, you learn just like... <laughs> Like, assist in some kind of way, not just turn your eyes. So, like, for instance, I donate several times a year to um, Salvation Army. 
Um, but then, too, if I'm somewhere and someone asks for food and I'm able, yeah. I will buy them food or, you know, whatever like that. Of course, we can't help every single person because it, it, you become like, okay, well, dang, every time I roll up off the freeway or somebody's sitting right there, I got to help every single yeah. person. Like, there's no way for us to help, like, every in, in case this isn't happening in your city and town because I know we have people from other states, especially yeah. in... Um, Detroit area, there's a lot of people that stand on the street corner begging with signs for, like, um, money. They're at intersections. They're right at freeway exits, and they're everywhere. It's like, it's literally like Bible times have come back. It's beggars everywhere. So then you have this mindset of, well, do I have to help every single one of these beggars that I see? Because then I'll never have anything or I can't afford it or I don't have anything. Like, where is the draw of, like, how many um, people of poverty do I help? So the, the understanding, and um, I think I do have this in the financial one. But I don't know how we have a lesson specifically on this. So we always put one together. But... Um, we do need to make sure that we're just not completely, because there are some people who despise the poor, yeah, yeah, and they're just yeah. like, you know, I pull my stuff up by yeah. my bootstraps, so you better do the same. Like, Which and brings, you're being haughty, huh? It brings a question, because not that it's justified, but like, with the poor, some of them are in that situation because, like, they, like, disobey God. Oh, absolutely. Curse, yeah, right? yeah. So it's, it's too What fun. do we do and do we still, like, help them even if they're, like, cursed or, like... Yeah, I mean, if God... Yeah, and here's the thing. I always say go off the leading of the Lord, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I know there are things that I can do. If I have a ton of just stuff in my house and clothes, I'm not going to be like, I'm going to just put this in the garbage. Yeah. I'm because, like, no, I'm going to get it to Salvation Army because it's going to help somebody. But then, too, there could be situations where... Maybe I'm like, well, you know, according to scripture, I should help this person. But then there may be a situation where the Lord like, no, don't do nothing for it now. And what I tell people, that, number one. Number two, it's not our responsibility to dull out the consequences of sin. Okay. So we do know that poverty is a consequence of sin. That's between them and God. That ain't got nothing. What, what does scripture tell me my responsibility is when it comes to the poor? There is nothing in scripture that's like, you need to be dictating <laughs> no, I'm not helping you because I know you said it. That's not you. <laughs> but yeah, there's like, like I was watching this video. And you know, like when you, so this woman, they were talking about um, opening low income housing in this very rich community in Texas. And you know, when a person says like, I'm not trying to be, you know, it's about to be real bad. So she was like, I'm not trying to be racist. Like, all right. And so it was like, oh, this is about to be bad. But it just kept getting worse. But she was basically like, I'm not trying to be racist, but I don't want this low-income community because they all criminals. They do drugs. And she just kept and she just kept pausing and be like, oh, my gosh, that sounds really racist, but I'm not trying to be racist. And then she kept going. And even the, the interviewer was just like, you need help. Because <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't even bail you out. But it to, it's to that point where it's just like, you know, we have all this wealth in this community. We have all these great schools. Mm -hmm. And we have this plot of land that we're not using. Yeah. That could really help low-income poverty people. And they nah, just because we don't want them here. Yeah. Oh. So it's like that, that just, that mindset of like, mm -hmm. I detest them. I don't want to help them. Everything is their fault. And they got to figure it out on their own. Okay. Yeah. The scripture that who hides his eyes, like you don't, you act like you don't see him, you yeah. don't want to see him, you're not even gonna pay attention to him, you just, you just wanna do your thing. Yeah, and that's why I said it was interesting because like that's my first time actually seeing that that scripture, okay. that specific one. Okay. And I was like, that that actually opens like a lot of want my understanding on a lot of different things that I study in scripture about poverty, but also just the world today, how we view the poor. I was like, yo, we actually doing ourselves a disservice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but now I was going to also, and this would go into a whole different, like, study or whatever like that. But that goes back to, like, some people ask the question, well, why do the wealthier keep getting wealthier, blah, 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 blah. You do have people that are philanthropists. Yep. That is what they focus on, helping. So they are following a biblical principle, whether they realize that or not. And again, I told you. I was watching a vlog and it was like wealthy people and up, up and coming wealthy people and they were telling them give back 50%. That's 
going into biblical principles. So they may not live for God, which a lot of these people did not. Probably they were atheists. But because they're following a biblical principle, because it's universal, yeah. it's going to come back on them and they're going to get more out of life. Whereas you have people that say that they're Christian and they don't want to give to the poor or do things like that. They just want to focus on, I don't know, themselves, their family, or whatever. So then this, they're working against the law and they're going to have many curses. So... It goes both ways sometimes. It's not a, a straight la- straight lace answer. Well, why do sinners, why are they blessed? Or why do they have a lot of stuff going on? They should just be down, out, destitute, and we should see their curses. Well, they're, not everything that they're doing is contrary to the law, spiritual law set in motion. And they hit a number of spiritual principles. Maybe they don't, don't even realize they're doing it. Or they were taught from a guise of this isn't God. It's, you know, the universe. and they're But they're still doing it, and it's working for them. Yeah. So Eli put something He's in. He's good. Okay. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I just think the scripture is he who lends to the poor lends to the Lord. You ain't going to get a better return on investment. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why, you know, we need to make sure we're doing our part. And um, we've been mentioning that, like, in our financial meetings, to make sure – we find ways to help the poor when we can and do stuff because that's only going to benefit the ministry as well as benefiting the person. But we should have a heart to want to help too. You know what I'm saying? So it shouldn't just be all about us, us, us. So no, you're not going to be able to help every single poor person. The poor is always going to be with us. But, you know, just do your part of whatever you can. Does that make sense? Sometimes when I give to the... um like, for me, sometimes when people are, like, asking for money, like, off the streets, um, sometimes those small dollar amounts or those obscure numbers that they're asking for, I don't want to support anyone's drug habits. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, if I was in their shoes, I would want someone to think about my needs because I don't know what they're going to spend the money on. Um, and I don't want to support anyone's drug habits. So I say, hey, sometimes I'm like, I can give you food, but I don't necessarily feel comfortable, like, giving you, like, Money, I may not say that part, but I'll just say, hey, I'll be back and I'll just give them some food because I don't always feel comfortable giving money because yeah. I don't want to support anybody's habits if, that's, if they're struggling with an addiction. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we deal with that? Is that okay to do? Or if someone asks for money, do we give them money? Or am I assuming that they don't? I don't know. I don't know. Just ask them. Because I think one thing I have started to see is I think homeless people and people who are struggling are starting to kind of shift from that as well just because of you know part of it is a implicit bias and perception that we have on poor people that a lot of them are yeah. drug or alcohol addicted so i do see especially downtown a lot of folks just ask for food like they don't even ask for money um but yeah just one lean to the holy spirit first and foremost second is just ask them if a person says like hey can you spare a couple dollars hey are you hungry they going yeah they're going to tell you if they hungry because i mean we've the first couple summers when we was down, that's what people told us. Like, yeah, I'm hungry. I right, was going to get you something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we said, you know. And I will also, go oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. It's like dragging, so it's always late on this thing. No, you're fine. Go um, ahead. And also, too, Eli, I would, while that, what Donovan said, with piggybacking off of that, um, be guided by the Holy Spirit, because what you don't want is to make the assumption, because I think we just automatically make the assumption, oh, they might buy drugs, or oh, they're this, or oh, they're that. So trying to just make sure we don't have that, like, implicit bias, but just making sure we feel comfortable knowing, like, they're human, too, and how would you want to be treated? Oh, you are so right about that, Nefeteria, because I had that mentality since college, um, because I would go downtown a lot and go running, and... um yeah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't realize that was me spewing bias on people when they were asking. So, yeah, thank you for that. And I know when me and Rodasia went downtown, a guy needed an Amtrak ticket. So that's not food, but he was asking for money for an Amtrak ticket to get back to wherever he was going because, you know, he was down and out here, so he was going back home. And it was like, oh, okay. And, you know, we prayed for him. We did the whole Holy Spirit thing. So it was like, okay, let's, you know. Okay. Let's get, let's get you taken care of, you know. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say when you said that, but 
hold and make sure you're holding yourself to the standard of if you about to ask a person that that you about to fulfill that need. Because mm-hmm. honestly, that's one of the reasons why I give people just cash. Because I know if I ask like what you need and they be like, I actually need a coat. I'm not about to go through the, like just legit like. I ain't got the time to take you to the, get your right size. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you really, you really got to be, be careful. Because hey, you going to set yourself up. Somebody be like, oh, I'm actually asking for money to get a coat. And you like, okay, hit this dollar. Because <laughs> like, ah, I'm not about to do that. Right? So, like, just, just be careful with that. Wait, what's the, I'm confused. What? Because, like, people who are asking for, a, per, a poor person asking for money isn't necessarily just asking for money to get something to eat. Like, when we were in yeah. Chicago, a lot of the poor people were asking for money to get winter clothes. Mm-hmm. So instead of just giving them the money, if I'm Eli and I'm about to be like, well, what you need? And they tell you, well, I need a coat. And you're not willing or able to meet that need. Well, then it's just going to be an awkward conversation when you could have just gave them the cash in the first place. Okay. So don't set yourself up to look foolish when you're actually trying to help somebody. That too. You get it. Yeah. yeah. Less yeah. I would just say, yeah, just I would, I would, me, but that's my person. I would look at you like, why did you ask it? And instead of just giving me the money. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I didn't got my hopes up. Or just, <laughs> or just bring him a coat later. Like, it ain't. Yeah, you can always, like, literally go to the Let me wash my clothes. I was about to say, it's not. They'll be there. So you can. They'll be there. They'll be there. Just circle them. I'll just bring you the coat. Sometimes they will. Sometimes, like, they might not necessarily believe you because, I mean, people will lie to them often. And so they'll be like, I'll be back in 30 minutes and they will never come. And so sometimes, like, depending on how long they or you have, they won't come back or they won't be there. Like, even though you, like, because that happened to. It mostly happened when I was like younger because we try, used to try to bring food to homeless people when I was younger, and we'd be like, "We'll be back. We're gonna go make some place and bring it to you." We come back, all gone. So sometimes like you can't go and get it. Like I have, I have gone to get a coat and a gloves from like, across the street because it was closed, but I had to tell them for like, "Do not go nowhere. I'm about to get you some gloves. I will be right back." So yeah. like I said, yeah. it just depends. On, are you willing to meet that? If they tell you. This is why I want money. Are you willing to meet that need? Yeah, there's a nice way you can be like, well, I can't do that, but here's a couple of dollars. But like I said, it's just, if you already in your mindset, like, I'm on my way to go somewhere, or I'm about to do something, or I have other priorities, just give them a couple of dollars and go about your business. And like when I was, when Jeremiah was younger, I used to have like food in the car. So I was always like, okay, here's a banana. Like, yeah. I got money, here's my, like yeah. and it's, it, at that point, if you turn it down, you turn it down. Yeah. Oh, no, we had, we way off topic. But when we were in Vegas, <laughs> <laughs> no, we were in Vegas, we had a woman turn us down. We was about to give her, we went to a steakhouse, me and Epiteria. And she was like, oh, no, I'm vegan. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, I'm all righty then. You are. You have no preferences. You live on the streets. Yeah, so the point is to, <laughs> with this scripture, is to, to not hide your eyes. Yeah. And again, a prideful, haughty person is, is going, yep. just to help you out, they're going to be the one to be like, whatever, I don't care, whatever. Um, so, but if you are, in some aspect of your life, trying to do something to help the poor, and that can be in several ways, whether it's giving food, money, donating clothes, because there are charities that help the, you know, homeless and, um, like, maybe women who had to leave their spouses due to abuse so they don't have any. There's a multiplicity of reasons of why people don't have, Mm -hmm. and there are a number of charities. So if you don't feel comfortable just giving to someone off the street, you can go through these reputable charities that you know they're legit doing something. So the goal is find some kind of way to be a contributor. So, yes. Um, This is back to the scriptures. Uh, Can we go through the last two in Proverbs? Because they are 10 and 11, so we can look at them together. Um, And then I can do a quick one. Okay. So go back to 10 and 11? Yeah, Proverbs, I'm sorry. Proverbs 30, verses 10 and 11. Proverbs Proverbs 30. Yeah, you could go in context for... um, Oh, those. Oh, so finish out Proverbs. Okay. I'm like... I'm sorry. Okay, so let's... Yeah. Um, so we're going to read these two together. So a curse shall, uh, I'm sorry, what? Accuse. Accuse not a servant <laughs> unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty. I mean, we'll curse her. There is, ooh, come on now. 
There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Okay. I think the easiest thing, let's go to blue letter. Because yep. that would be, so we can just see. Okay, so this is Proverbs. I'm going to just start with 30 and 10. <laughs> All right, so that word curse is the uh, kalal, which that's a disrespectful one. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. And then the other one probably is the same. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. So we go back. That's my favorite special about the episode. That's actually the only episode I like. <laughs> so yeah, we're not going to use neither one of these. Okay. So um, five minutes to wrap up for today. Anything that we need to review? Questions, comments, thoughts? I mean... We went through 14 scriptures, which is really good. Yes. Um, we kept five of the 14 scriptures we went through. So now we're um, going through, we're seeing uh, what we didn't keep. I keep the ones we didn't keep, and I like mark what we went through so that whoever wants to go back and review this uh, document mm -hmm. can see like how we got to the conclusion for not keeping the scriptures mm -hmm. and then when you scroll to the right you can see what categories they were in um we got some today that were how a curse comes slash what brings a curse and in the result of a curse okay and um, I just scroll back up. So we just finished Proverbs. So this is what we have left for Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So the biggest one is going to be Jeremiah. And once we finish Old Testament, this is what we got in New Testament. So we're almost done going through the scriptures. So a few more classes and we should be done going through the scriptures. Do we need to do anything further um, with this exercise once we go through the scriptures? Um, to understand how to study, Please just so I'll know. Just, just do a what do you, wait, what? I said, don't give us a quiz. Oh. <laughs> like, actually, um, putting them, consolidating them into them in their groups and putting out, like, what the other people should glean from. So, this. like, make a lesson. Yeah. Or, not necessarily a lesson, but. Because she already putting stuff in categories. Yeah, she's already putting the scriptures next to it. So the only so we can review. So I guess wait, let me get my words together. So the goal for this was just for us, cause like, cause like, majority, half of us, whatever, half of us are not are not teachers. Uh -huh. <laughs> A couple of us are not teachers, uh -huh. so like. What this was, was for us to be able to go home and start studying stuff out and not necessarily put a lesson together, but just so that we have the information that's easy for us to digest in the future. That was a goal, right? Yeah, well, to help you understand how to study. So when you're trying to understand something in scripture, what is some tools that you can use to help in your understanding? Um, and if it was a topical like this one, because not everything you're going to have to go through and search like this. If I'm just studying the book of Romans, I don't necessarily have to do what I'm doing. We talked about this. What You would do what we're doing now if you're doing a topical study, if you're studying people in the Bible, because you want to see everywhere they're mentioned and what happened. And I think there was one other thing. I put it back in the, I added it to the lesson. But so um, the, uh, the one other thing that I was thinking that you may what we need to do once we go through everything is um, everybody needs to peruse the document and you have to come back and tell me what is a curse, how do curses come, what are symptoms of curses, because we need to, want, now that we've done this, we need to walk away with a full understanding of curses. That's not right. just, we just did all this and boom, let's move on. Like, what did you get from this? So that's going to be the quiz. 
<laughs> so, so, so is going to make sure again, once we're done, everybody knows how to get to this document. Because the next class, once we get through all of this, is let's talk about all of this stuff. And I would say in preparation for that class, make sure y'all actually like, write out thought, like actually do yeah. the work. I'm not trying to say y'all don't. I'm just putting it out there. I want to be like, but Donovan and Fire, do the work and actually come with what you've gleaned, the revelation and understanding that you now have. So as we discuss as a class, you can look what you wrote down independently and like, am I lining up or am I differing? And is this difference correct or is this wrong? Why, why did I get here versus what we discussed as a class? And remember, our lessons and gather are not like, oh, we had that lesson, we move on. Everything is a stair step to something else. So going forward, whenever we talk about curses, Everybody that was present for this lesson should be able to be like, oh, I know what a curse is, how a curse come, blah, 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 blah. So you should be able to read more into the situation when we read of an incident in the Bible or when we go into a different lesson and curses come up, X, Y, Z. Um, so, because as teachers now, we're going to, I'm going to really make a point to start seeing if y'all are drawing the dots and connect <laughs> or connecting the dots or is it just... You left this in one side low, and you left that in another side low, and you left that in this side low, but you never connected everything because everything connects. And the lessons we give is to help you see the bigger picture. So let's make sure we're digesting this so that going forward, now we see the broad picture of curses and the narrow picture, um, however far we need to drill it. Because that's the point. The goal should be... I can see it from a broad perspective, but if I need to, I can drill it all the way down to the minutest of perspective. Yeah. And if I can't do that, there's something lacking in me understanding this, and I need to study more. So can you dissect, can you dissect it, and then can you put it all back together? And like a perfect example of that is last Monday when we were reading a scripture in Tremiko's lesson on judgment, and it was a couple of them that was talking about a fool. And then I asked, what does God say about a fool? Because we learned about that when we studied knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, right? Like, so having that background and that contextual understanding, you should be seeing a bigger picture in this new... You shouldn't be coming in this new topic completely blind, right? Because it's like, no, you, un you understand other aspects of it. That should be kind of leading you towards grasping this concept that is new to you. Got it? Um, uh, can you go over those questions one more time or just write them down so they're all Sure. Clear? Um, I have what is a curse? Well, How does a curse come? What are the signs and symptoms of a curse? Can you dissect and read? Come ahead. No, that was just me asking. Oh. Um, I think that's it. I'll double check because I, I put it in one of the description boxes of the YouTube recording. If 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 there was something extra, I'll uh, text it to you. But for it. now, I think that's enough. And I got it on the recording. Okay, cool. All right. If nothing else, we will close out in prayer. Two minutes over. Okay. All right. So, Father, Lord God, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we are continuing to grow, to learn, um, and that we're all just um, seeing things from different perspectives, and we're just growing, Lord God. So we just thank you for all those um, blessings, Lord God, that you are allowing us to glean from you. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that as a class and a spiritual family, we hold each other accountable um, and that none of us take offense, but we're all growing and learning um, and that we will continue to hold each other accountable and to grow and to learn, Lord God. We pray that we all have blessed days on today. We play, play. We pray that the recording of Gather Talks today, both recordings, goes well lord god and we just pray that those that are going to be journeying and hitting the roads on today that you would give all of us safe passage we pray all these things in jesus name amen, amen.